Oh, boys and girls, somehow we survived in the last video without getting sacked, despite the fact we're 18 points off top of the league and the board are insisting that we win automatic promotion this year. We have two goals, really, for the season. Goal number one, we've just got to get promoted. If we can get promoted through the playoffs, that might be okay. My worry, which is kind of what ties into the second part of this goal we were talking about, my worry is that once we mathematically can't win promotion automatically, they might sack me even if we're on course to win promotion. And that would be a disaster. It'll probably happen in today's video, though. Um, right. What I was trying to say before I was so rudely interrupted, my word, um, is that... Yeah, this is the actual situation that we just described in the intro. I can put my headphones back on properly now. Um, yes, rudely interrupted. Here's another example of a rude interruption. Yes, that's why I'm shouting so loud. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Um, so our form hasn't actually been that too bad. It hasn't been too bad. Apart from that spell right at the start of the season where we lost three games back to back. We've generally been okay. We had a little bit of an iffy spell there. We've had a few consecutive draws, but it's not terrible form. And actually, we're doing all right. 28 games played, 50 points, third in the league. Looking pretty comfortable. The problem we've got isn't necessarily what we're doing. It's what Port Vale are doing. Because they've somehow got 68 points already after 28 games. They're on course for a stupendously high points total. I feel like the game is just trying to punish me because I know I keep going back to this. But if we go back to that season where we got 92 points, which would have been enough to win the title any other previous year. Well, we were hard done by there because of the AI. The following season, the AI is even better. Yeah, we only got 88 points, but still 88 points would have been enough in any, any apart from that season. So the last two years in a row, we've got enough points where in a normal season, we'd have gone up automatically. But the AI is just ramping up and ramping up. So we had 98 point filed two years ago. Last year, 106, 97 and 95 points from AI teams. And this year, you've got Port Vale on course for probably about 110 points. The, this league is getting harder and harder to get out of the longer we go because... It's just really emphasizing the issue that we have in real life. The issue in real life is with only two up, two down. You have all these good teams accumulating at the top of the league that can't make it up. And then the teams that come down just come down and fall into the bottom half of the league. And the good teams at this level get better and better. Port Vale, Ebsfleet, us. We've been banging on this door for years and we're just all improving all the time. But despite the fact we're improving, they're improving faster because they've got more money. And... It's a problem. It's excuses, but it's a problem. Right, here we go. Facing Boston. Battle of the Oranges. A lot of orange in non-league. It's weird, but a battle of the oranges. Sort of oranges. Look at the amount of orange we've got down here. Of players who are not close to fit. What is happening? We're going to win a football match. That's what's happening. Come on! I thought that was you knocking on this door. Is that so? Oh, what a goal from Goodrum. Is that something excellent for me? Female? You just got the ump with me. Um, that, What a goal that was. Goodness me. I did a giveaway for 800, did I? So 800 might be the highest. Well, I guess 800 is the highest we've done before. So we're pretty close to the highest ever, which is still splendid. I mean, what is my scout thinking here? This guy's on four and a half grand a week and his value is between 10 and 15 million pounds. You know what, Joshua? Yes, I agree. He'd probably be a very good signing. What's my current job security? We'll check on that after the game. That's a good header. Any chance I'll make it to legend before FM23? It's guaranteed. Traditionally, I think I mentioned this in the rules video this year. Traditionally, non need to legend has ended with a Champions League win. That has That tradition has been abandoned. The story ends when I feel the story's over. So, like, if we randomly win the Champions League with Norwich in the next season or two, I don't think that's... I don't think a one-off Champions League win with Norwich is legendary status. 
it's similar to how we always talk about with like pentagon challenges are easy it does get a little bit easy at that point if you've won the champions league at two different clubs you're going to win it at the third club almost as soon as you arrive because that's just how it is like although we wouldn't end on a one-off random champions league win with norwich if we won it back to back years then at that point you're like well yeah okay probably do need to end it now we are playing some good football at the moment what's happened to the team they've all um they've all got used to each other because remember we did a full-on rebuild in the summer so they're now used to each other they're settled in they've got full tactical familiarity and they are flying it's awesome what's my feeling on a glory hunter style um, well, I couldn't ever do it because it's Ben's thing. So, I mean, it seems like it's a fun concept for a save. But just like uh, Ben wouldn't come out and do a non-leader legend, I'm not going to do a glory hunter. Well, I, was it last year or the year before? Whenever he did glory hunter the first time, I was ahead of him on it for in non-league to legend even though i started in non-league i think we'd won the league in england germany spain and the champions league from starting in non-league and i was about 12 seasons in 13 seasons in i ended the save but i think i could have com i think i could have completed glory hunter within 20 years starting in non-league that year we just had an absolutely insane run I think that was a bit of a one-off. We've never had a run like that since. Like, even a club like Leamington, the cost of sponsoring Leamington shirts would be prohibitive. Because I imagine it's a big five-figure fee that they're getting for their shirt sponsorship. I mean, to be fair, even if it's a small five-figure fee, I ain't spending five figures getting my name on some non-league football shirts. But, like, if I ever worked with someone like Bourne again... Part of me wishes at the time I'd just offered to buy them completely new kits with my logo and the redesigned club badge and everything on. Because the kits they were playing in had been donated a few years before and they didn't have a sponsor, I don't think. So I think with Bourne, we probably could have just done them full first team home and away kits and just bought them a set of kits and that probably would have been enough for the sponsorship. Probably wouldn't have needed to pay any extra on top. Like, non to Legend is my unregistered trademark. I've never bothered registering it. Good from Senate again. That's his third incredible free kick of the stream. But if someone came out and did a non to Legend style thing and called it non to Legend and ripped off my idea, I could protect my unregistered trademark. This is some good form. Look at that. What a month December was. Merry Christmas, everybody. We're still 16 points behind. Oh my god! Ah! Ah! The board is still disappointed. The fact the team is so many points behind where we were expected to finish makes the underachievement even more pronounced. They don't care about the recent form. They're still disappointed. Get out of town, Peterborough! What is this? Grr. can't believe it what i also can't believe is in on earth one when i was at peterborough i inquired about buying him and lemington asked for four million pounds they were in league two at the time but still what a difference he's the same player it's not as if it's two different game worlds that have been generated it's literally the same guy in the same season but rather than four million pounds, he's worth seventy thousand pounds. I'm just gonna reject. I'm gonna persuade him to stay. Gotta do it the right way. You can't just reject it because you'll upset him. 
We both know that Peter, this is his voice. If you never heard Amari Theodros speak, this is his voice. We both know that Peter are playing a high, in a better division than we do. A chance to test myself at a higher level like this is something I have to take. All right, Amari, goodness me. I've got no intention of letting you go. What's, what's it going to take to keep you here? I need to be playing football in League One at this stage of my career. And that's something I realistically can't see. I, I'm getting the words wrong. And that's not something I can realistically see happening at this club. Oh, I see. I see. Um, Where's the one about a realistic fee? Oh, would a new contract persuade you to stay? That... That would tempt me to stay, but it's going to cost you a lot. Make sure it's a good offer. All right. Okay, I will. What the f flipping heck? That doesn't seem outrageous. Okay. We've got to keep him. He's the heart and soul of the football club. So now let's offer him the new contract. Okay. Well, you're not having that. Boom. Reject. Ha! 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 Right, Ocaronko is one player of the month. I mean, let's not worry about the fact that... Ugh, let's not worry about any of that. What's he on at the moment? He's doubled his wage there. But then, you know what? Look how good he is. He's worth double his wage. He's going to still be playing for us in the Premier League. Um, right, Northampton want Ocaronko. But... I mean, in real life, if you've got a player who is 24 years old and has scored that many goals in the conference over the course of a year and a half. In fact, forget a year and a half. Going back four years, he's clearly a good striker. A 20 goal a season striker in the conference four years in a row. You don't offer 15 grand for him. This is what annoys me sometimes about football manager. That guy, at a minimum, is a quarter of a million pound player in reality. So we'll reject it and he'll get a grump on. 18 points now between us and Port Vale because they are relentless. I mean, how many consecutive games have we won and not caught up at all? Port Vale are just winning and winning and winning and winning. There was never going to be a chance for us to win the league this year. When this is what the AI are doing. What are we supposed to do with that? Not sure how Port Vale are in this league to start with. I mean, they've been here for a while. But this is an example of how hard the National League is. Because you get a team that slips out of League 2. Who are obviously good enough to go back up. I mean, look at those points totals. They've never finished below 5th. 80, 77, 92, 95, 81 already after 33 games. They should be back in the Football League already. But because you have that bottleneck of only two up, two down, they've got stuck down here. And now you just end up with these super powered mega teams that there's no competing with. I bet they pay way more in wages than we do as well. We're paying... Hold on, that's transfer spend. We're there paying 894,000 a year in salary. Port Vale, 1.66 million in salary. So they're paying double the salaries we're paying. And they should be in the football. There's no competing with it. Vale's salary is more than the team I'm managing in the second tier in Italy. I mean, let's compare it to League Two. Let's see how big they are in comparison to a typical League Two team. So if we look at team detailed and salaries so they'd be the third highest salary there you go Notts county who won the conference last year same salary 1.66 million that's the same as port vale and they're the third highest in league league two as well because they were a mega team who got caught in the national league for year after year after year and they've gone up and i imagine they're going to go up again where are they okay not quite but let's go up to league one so League One, salaries again. I mean, obviously, you've got a couple of mega teams in here already. But, okay, so Port Vale and Notts County would be the cheapest, would be the lowest teams in League One. But yeah, I'm convinced we do back-to-back -back once we actually get promoted. 
Northampton now want Goodrum. Northampton can do one. So, what's that? 11 games remaining. We've got to make up 18 points. It's still mathematically possible. I mean, that's not ideal, is it? We're trying to win automatic promotion. We're setting the record for record number of draws. Sheesh. 13 draws. What are we doing? So again, I'm not begrudging the fact that Port Vale are the team who are going to win the league. They should be. They're the bigger team with more fans, more money. And finishing third for a club our size is fine. The only issue in all of this is that the board are insisting that we go up automatically. And there's only one automatic promotion spot. That's the problem. The problem isn't even Port Vale. The problem is our board. I can only hope we get a board takeover in the next month and they decide to keep me on and forget about the target the previous board set. There we go. We'll take that penalty. Thank you very much. We're winning some penalties today as well. We draw a lot of fouls. It's good. Yes, football. Subathon. Um, it's finding the time to do a subathon. That's the problem. I need to be able to set aside an entire day, effectively an entire weekend to do a subathon. And with the showdowns happening once a month, and I have the kids every other weekend as well, that only really leaves one weekend a month. And sometimes Anna plans things. Just a counter snoring. Um, well, it's, it's, oh, that's a lovely goal. Snoring was the original reason I did the sleep study because Anna was fed up with my snoring. Oh, what's this? Ocaron Crows backed manager Kevin Chapman to remain in the Butts Park area, Arena dugout. The poacher has revealed that he believed Chapman was doing a good job and it was important to see the club maintain cont continuity by offering him a new deal. Francis, you beautiful specimen. The board is still disappointed, but give me a new contract. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, Posh have sacked the manager again. Keeps happening. Manager Martin Dubravka at Posh. I mean, again, I'm pretty confident I would get that job. They're going to be in League 2 by the time we get there. See, this time, Matthew Everington's the um, caretaker manager again. Last time, it was Simon Davies. I mean, I'll level with you. When I'm playing football manager and there's no camera on me, you'll rarely see me go, yeah! But when I'm making a video, I will. Because I'm over-exaggerating everything to make it entertaining. And if you compare my first couple of videos to the way my videos are now, you'll see how much the Lelujo persona has developed. Kev hasn't changed very much in six years. But Lelujo's entirely different to what he was like six years ago. Because like I said to Z, we, me and Zealand had quite a long chat about it. You just, you try different things. And then when something works, when something gets a good reaction, you do it more. Like the bell thing. It was just sat on my desk because I had this when I was a teacher. So when I stopped being a teacher, I brought all my stuff home plonked it in the garage i had a big corner desk situation back in the garage so it was in a box in the garage and i scored a goal and just it was there so i rang it the crowd went wild it became a thing that for a lot of people because the thing with teachers for a lot of teachers it's all they ever wanted to do and they couldn't dream of ever doing anything else for me teaching was just a convenient thing to do so i was never planning to be a teacher for a long time but they thought i was insane um, that's unfortunate, that late goal. Because we'd, we'd closed the gap on Port Vale to 15 points temporarily there. Whereas now it's back out to 17 points again. But at least Woking stay below us. How did you manage to balance it all? By not sleeping very much. 2010s. Uh, not 2010s. Well, a little bit late 2010s. Early 2010s maybe. But maybe 2000s indie is where my music is stuck so there's a lot of white stripes and strokes and arctic monkeys and block party and muse and uh, you know that kind of thing that kind of enormous genre that's where my daily mix is stuck and probably always will be because i don't ever listen to any new stuff my spotify rap was 
ruined by my son constantly putting nursery rhymes on. Nice. Come on. Oh, Conte. Is that onside? Referee, keep your keep your whistle to yourself. I think that is I think that counts. Come on, boys. Um, because he's a big Beyonce fan. Bet you didn't know that about Andy. Loves Beyonce. Um But I never thought to do that podcast because they're the only thing they're the only podcast me and Anna both like. Or we'll have Radio X on. I haven't decided what will happen if I get sacked, to be honest. I'm just hoping I don't get sacked. Right. We are going to end things there, though. We've got the Fat Cup quarterfinals starting the stream off on Friday. Um, and then, like I say, we will finish the season. Only six games remaining. Um, we're only 17 points behind Port Vale. We'll be fine. We're, we're a C. A C is okay.